Hey YouTubers, back with another video today. Um, I'm Mike B, and we're going to be talking about why did bayonets get shorter um, throughout history, specifically in the 20th century and to the present day. Uh, there's many different reasons for that, and I'm going to use a bunch of examples of some out of my collection to kind of illustrate that and kind of show you the, the transition and the um, progression of the shorter bayonet length. And I'll be talking about the reason why they became shorter as I'm doing that. So we're going to kind of start out with some um, late 19th century design bayonets. We'll start out probably with the oldest one, the French um, Rosalie as it's called. It's just the cruciform bayonet like that. It's just um, a big spike, right? And if you know the Lebel model 1886-93 rifle, you know that that thing is really long to begin with. And when you tack this on it, it's like a, a spear. It's like a medium range spear. It's pretty insane. So the Germans, of course, came out with the Seitengewehr 98. It's a pretty thin blade. Um, this is actually on loan from me, or um, from Dakota to me. Uh, this is his bayonet, but he's gracious enough to let me use it in a video. Um, just figured I'd do a little shout out, bud. But anyways, uh, yes, yeah, so the Germans came out with the uh, Seitengewehr 98 to match the length of the Rosalie, but make it into a blade bayonet instead. Still makes the Gewehr 98, which is sort of comparable in length to the um, Lebel 1886-93 rifle. It turns that into a medium range spear as well. So it's like, okay, well, at that point, we were just coming out of the line battle mentality of these muskets and these really long rifles that had really long bayonets. I have, obviously there were some breech loading rifles and even some bolt action rifles, but they still retained the full length bayonet because somehow the military has just said, you know, well, you only get a certain number of shots and then, you know, you've got a pretty useless stick unless you throw a bayonet on the end of it and then you've got a medium range spear. So it was this old world mentality kind of meeting with the new weaponry. And um, I think the one of the one of the bayonets that kind of comes you know into uh, com a comparable length is the British pattern 1907 bayonet for the short Lee Enfield number one Mark III. That was still really long, but here's the thing: is the the Lee Enfield rifle was a shorter weapon, so they figured they needed to keep with the long length in order to sort of stay in competition as far as reach goes with the S98. And its little brother, the S9805, the butcher blade, as everybody calls it, right? So you start seeing these are a little bit shorter, especially the 9805. And that's sort of because they figured out that, well, it kind of throws the balance off, too, when you've got a longer bayonet on the end of your rifle. Then they started to figure out that that's not exactly a good thing when you're firing because these repeating rifles, you know, the um, the Gewehr 98, the 1886-93, and the Lee Enfield No. 1 Mark III, and not to mention the, forgot this one, this is a 9130 bayonet, but the actual blade design itself is the same as the M91 bayonet. And uh, all of these have the same thing in mind, but they started figuring out on these repeating rifles that the longer the bayonet is, it's kind of a drawback is it becomes a little bit more unstable and unwieldy even when using it, you know, on a, on a charge as a bayonet. It, it throws the balance of the rifle off. So countries like Austria-Hungary, and I don't happen to have one of those bayonets here, they actually went with a shorter bayonet, and I'm not sure if that was their reasoning, but for whatever reason, the um, N95, the Steyr N95, has a shorter kind of um, World War II length, as we think of it, bayonet, than all of the counterparts that it was going up against, like the um, 9130, I'm sorry, the, the Model 91, God, I'm so used to saying 9130, the Model 91 and um, the uh, Carcano, which also had a long bayonet. And so as we're progressing through the First World War, all of this kind of new, new world warfare clashed with the old world, and they started figuring out, wow, well, geez, the S98 breaks, you know, if you're using it, as a bayonet, or if you drop it or something, the Rosalie breaks. Uh, the 1907 just makes it very unwieldy to to fire while you're doing that, and even using that as a as a bayonet weapon, it still throws throws the balance off the rifle a lot. Same with this one, and this I mean this one really doesn't because it's not that heavy, but it's still like it's different having an extra like half a pound of weight at the end of your already long rifle. So, the reason I have these here as an example is because I'm going to bring out some of the World War II counterpart parts that I have. Um, before that, though, I'm going to show you who was actually ahead of the game. 
go figure. In 1918, the Swiss came out with a shortened length. As you can see, I'll put the hilts up, you know, in a comparable length to 1907. It's about a good four inches shorter than the 1907, which is an already, you know, a little bit shorter than these two. So they figured that out really quick because they were using long bayonets too for their um, 1911 rifles and their 9611s and their 1889s were pretty long bayonets. So they came out with the 1918, which obviously is probably one of the most beautiful short length bayonet designs ever. Um, and so it shows that you know the, the 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 wheels were turning on that on that concept already in 1918 at the end of the First World War, by other countries that kind of got these these people that were saying yeah this is the problem we had with them so you know okay well let's design a shorter weapon or I'm sorry well yeah it is a weapon um, shorter bayonet for our rifle so interwar period I'm just going to use this as an example I don't have actually a lot of World War One bayonets just kind of weird I've got a lot of Pre World War II and post World War II, but we'll just use the S, the S um, 8498, or S9884, 8498, I believe. I always get that mixed up, and I did a video on it where I got it right. Anyways, so this compared with, say, we'll just go with the S98, right? So the, the big one, the long one. It's about, it's just about half the length of the S98. And then the 9805, which was predominantly used in the First World War by most um, frontline infantry units, it's about only three quarters the length of the 9805. So the Germans got on board with that concept. Even the American bayonets, they went from the 1905 bayonet um, and they cut those down for the M1 Garand because they realized that the longer the bayonet is, the less stable it is when you're actually firing. And here's the thing, because of these repeating rifles, you don't just have one shot and your enemy doesn't just have one shot and then whoever decides to rush first wins you have to bank on a b bunch of different factors like is he out of ammunition am i out of ammunition are we going to do this is he going to assault my position do i have you know do i have the five seconds it takes to reload five rounds or eight rounds or however many you want to reload you know all that had to be taken into consideration plus as a soldier a longer bayonet and a bigger bayonet is more weight to carry and when you're carrying weight every day an extra two pounds can actually add up. So it's less weight to carry when you've got something like the um, the World War II German K98 bayonet. And it just is more practical in that sense, too. So, again, I, I hope you're starting to see all these different reasons why they actually got shorter. Because you think, you know, well, if you're going to have a bayonet on a rifle, might as well be long. Well, when you're actually going to use it in the modern world, longer is not always better. And they found that out starting in the First World War. And then, so after World War II... I've got a, an example here, just kind of like a Cold War interwar period. This is a Yugoslavian M48 bayonet. You can see that right there on the on the blade. And this is also the same length as like a um, an 8498. You can see that. And I think you know they use a lot of the 8498s, and um, that's probably why they designed their own their bayonet to be the same length and stuff. A little bit different. It's got a locking ring and such, but it's not really about the details of the bayonet in this video. So you've got that and. Pretty much every military, like on the FAL, the G3, um, the Sturmgewehr 57, all these all these countries that started shortening up their bayonets kept with about that same length, and some even a little bit shorter through the 20, the rest of the 20th century. Uh, we did it, uh, even even okay. So even on the 9130, right? This is a World War II bayonet. The M44 comes out, and the bayonet's only about that long, and it's a lot thicker. Albeit it's a folding bayonet, but they understood just because it's a short weapon doesn't mean you need a full length bayonet on it. You need something that's kind of proportional to the weapon. So when you are using it, you know, as a as a um, stabbing weapon, it's easier to control. It's not as long. Um, with the M44 folded out, it's just a little bit longer than a 9130 or about the same length. So weight wise, it's about the same. So that was pretty cool that everybody started getting those concepts and applying them. Now. We'll try and keep this video a little short. I just wanted to show you how that kind of adopt or adapted itself into, you know, these kind of bayonets. The one that's been pretty much the same blade style and just changing the hilt since, you know, the 1950s when this came out for the AK bayonet or AK series rifle. Um, that's also really short. That's a lot shorter than the S8498. And it's also designed to be used for multi-purposes, right? You've got a tool now. This is also a tool as well as just a weapon. And I'm sure people use the bayonets for tools before, but I mean, it's also easier to use a short knife like this for fighting close range if you absolutely get to that point, instead of having to wield something like that, you know, the S9805, that's really long and really um, cumbersome. So there's two more reasons right there. We keep adding on as time goes on. I'll set this right here, which led us to copy that kind of design in the US M9 bayonet, right? 
that's a pretty small blade, or not small, but short. It's thick. It's also very utilitarian. We kind of acquired that um, wire cutter idea right there. So it's also a tool. It's short. It's a decent fighting knife because it's that length. The blade is very thick and very stout. It's not thin like most of these other longer blade bayonets are. So it's probably not going to break, and it's utilitarian. You know, you can use it as a little saw, and it's good for opening up stuff and whatever. So then you've got a little pouch for a stone on it and stuff. So these bayonets, it's not necessarily that shorter is better. It's just what applies and what actually, what is actually better for today's environment in fighting. And it's not like you're going to be doing all these bayonet charges. There hasn't really been a lot of bayonet charges since maybe the Second World War. But in modern warfare, there's really not a whole hell of a lot of that. Um, so, yeah, that, that hopefully explains a bunch of different reasons why bayonets have progressively, as you can see, gotten shorter as time has gone by. And it just is the way things are. And I don't think we're going to be seeing long bayonets unless we have some, like, apocalypse and we have to start all over with weaponry and, you know, go to, like, the medieval times and post-medieval revolution style. And you got these super long spears, pretty much, as your secondary weapon, all the way up until today where you've got the M9 and the um, AK bayonets. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And, uh, I mean, I like learning and I like teaching what I've learned. By no means an expert, this is just what I've observed and read through the years, and it all makes sense. So, all right, guys, if you haven't already, if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel, that'd be great. And for all you guys that already are subscribed, thanks a lot for watching, and hopefully you enjoyed this. We will see you next time.